<laughs> What's going on, everybody? Let's see if I can fix this a little bit. Is that better? All right. So, anyway, um, as you know, I've been doing a little bit of coaching, uh, slowly kind of been picking up clients and, like I said, far more, more, more uh, knowledgeable coaches out there than myself. But the one main thing like, I constantly come across, and I actually got asked this question the other day, um, was in regards to like, how do you stay motivated? And obviously there are different factors that come into play with motivation. Some are short-term, long-term, some of that instant gratification type stuff. Um, motivation can be a very tricky thing, I'll be honest right now. Uh, how do I particularly stay motivated? Is I kind of set myself up for success where a lot of people set themselves up for failure. So let me give you an example. We just passed January, we get the resolution. There's people like, I'm gonna get in the best shape of my life. Right? That lasts for what? Months, two months, maybe three, and then usually a large majority fall off. The reason being is that people think they can do kind of the same thing and get a different result, which is not how it works. They also don't set measurable and trackable goals that help them kind of set up the pattern to succeed and build momentum and continue moving forward. So Somebody says they want to lose 30 pounds. Well, they immediately think they're going to be in the gym for a month, they're going to starve themselves, or they're going to avoid certain foods, and like the 30 pounds are just going to melt off. Well, most likely, the 30 pounds didn't just come on in a month. It probably happened over several years of bad dietary habits and lack of nutrition and lack of physical activity. And over a course of time, you may have put on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds, whatever the case may be, correct? Okay. So when you want to get a goal, whether it's a material item like a car, a house, a watch, um, whatever the case may be, usually what you would do is create a budget so you know how to save some money to the side so you can then go eventually over the course of a year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever the case may be, go and achieve said item. Um, and that's how you kind of establish small little benchmarks that build momentum to help you succeed to get to your eventual goal. And sometimes it happens by accident, but in order to stay motivated, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve has to, can't be coming from the outside, okay? Those type of motivational factors will always fade eventually. So, you know, um, wanting to look good for you know, the beach or look good for your wedding, those are short goals that eventually, if you do hit them, will fail and then that, the old habits come back and you go right back into the same way where you were. Now for me, um, bodybuilding and looking the way I did was not the original goal. The original goal was I just wanted to get bigger and stronger, right? And then, you know, still playing basketball and things like that. And then when I was about 25 or so, I had my last knee injury. Um, and things got hard for me to kind of stay motivated. I was going to the gym, but like, if I felt like skipping, I kind of did. And then my diet wasn't exactly the best. And then I kind of got, you know, I got heavy. I got up to like 230 pounds. Um, I wasn't in good shape at all. I was, I was headed for trouble, honestly. Um, probably would have had some health, major health issues had I not um, gotten a hold of myself and changed it. So what I started to do was instead of just making like this random goal, I'm gonna drop 40 pounds, right? I said I was gonna compete in a natural bodybuilding show. I gave myself probably about close to 30 weeks to get ready for it. And I established my dietary habits of what I need to do to lose that weight and then get to stage eventually. And then when I got to stage, I had goals of, okay, well, I don't wanna just pack all that fat back on post show like a lot of other competitors do. Um, and look like I never competed two weeks later, um, I need to reverse diet back out slowly. So I set up little goals and slowly manipulated my food to bring them up to a healthy body weight again. And then the next time I competed, I did the same thing. I gave myself even, I said, I want to come better than last time. So I gave myself even longer to diet, uh, this time going out to 40 weeks. Now, I'm not saying that's a necessity of something I did. Um, I think actually I probably dieted a little too long, to be honest, but I came in shredded. I looked better than I did in 2012. Then when I said, okay, well, I'm 2014, I'm done. I'm going to do my reverse diet. I'm going to stick to it even harder and really do a nice slow reverse into a nice lean bulk, which allowed me to put on about 20-something pounds over the course of 
three years, maybe a little bit over, um, which gave me the look that I have now. So for me to stay motivated, there's a couple things that come into play. One, sometimes I can tap into what they would call like a controlled rage, okay? Um, a dark place that I can go to, and not in a bad way, like not like I'm gonna kill somebody or do something horrible or break the law or something like that. I go back into, sometimes I'm able to tap into this where I'm thinking about being bullied when I was a kid. I'm thinking about how I was told I was never good enough, um, whatever the case may be. So just some, somebody who was just constantly like putting me down. Sometimes I could tap into that and use that to then go into the gym and move a ton of weight and stick to it. Now when I'm out of the gym, very easy to just go off track with my nutrition if I want. So that's why I'm very a big advocate of flexible dieting because it allows me, if I feel the need to have something more on the fun side or unclean side, whatever you want to call it, I can fit it in and not fall off the wagon by any means. Now, I don't have a bad relationship with food. I don't have any emotional content and connection to it. I don't look at to, um, what's the word? Just make me feel better, right? So if I have a piece of cake, it's really no different than me than, oh, you know, I know it seems weird, but it's true. So I've learned to change my thinking that food is nothing more than fuel. Do I enjoy a cookie or a chip or piece of cake? Sure. Is it going to ruin my world if I don't have it for a month? No. Um, it, it doesn't really make or, make or break me one way or another. So now what I do is I, I set up and control all the variables I want to eventually reach my goal. And then as I see my body changing, my motivation continues. So, you know, when you're doing especially anything fitness related, but just in life, you need to set up little benchmarks that it sets you up for the small steps for success. And then you need to control the variables, in this example, your food and your training protocol to help you hit those benchmarks in time to then keep moving forward. So you see results and then you keep getting motivated and you continue on. Now, if you set up a benchmark and you miss it, maybe the only thing you need to do is then reevaluate the variables again, AKA your food and your training protocol, let's say your cardio, for instance, um, and then that way you can make sure that you have everything aligned to your goals. And that sets you up for successful motivation. You can't rely on the quick fix. The quick fix will not get you there. It might give you a quick little step forward, but then it's gonna fade. And the one day that you feel tired, or the one day you had a rough day, it's gonna be very easy for you to fall off again, go into bad dietary habits, comfort foods, um, and or skip your workout because today was a rough day and I need an emotional mental break. And that unfortunately leads to the wheels coming off, bad habits, especially if you can't get back on like the next day um, and therefore sets you up to fail. You look in the mirror, you feel depressed, you give up, you quit, or it's hard to find the willpower to keep moving forward to achieve said goal. Now I'm not saying everybody has to be a bodybuilder. I'm just saying if you wanna keep you know a healthy body weight, Maybe you want to have your abs somewhat visible all year round. Maybe you want to be able to run a couple, you know, several miles a week. Um, maybe it's you want to deadlift 600 pounds. Maybe you want to compete, whatever the case may be. I'm just saying that in order to stay motivated, you have to set yourself up to succeed and then tune out a lot of the other distractions, which means if you don't feel like training, unless you're running like a 103 fever, for example, but like, you know, if you just don't feel like it that day, you show up, you do it anyway. You give it the best you possibly have. So if you're not training at a full 100%, let's say you're training at 85%, you give a full 100% of that 85%. And over time, that consistency will build the habit. That habit will help keep you motivated and that will help you eventually reach your goal. I hope that makes sense. But literally, this is the only way, other way I can explain it. Relying on somebody to go, good job, is not gonna do it because most people aren't gonna do that. They're gonna pull you down the second they start seeing you succeed for the most part because they want you to come back in their direction. I've talked about this before, before, like the world encourages mediocrity and you know doesn't want you to really get ahead of anybody else type of mentality. That's why these participation trophies for everybody, these kids is a bad idea because they don't build any real confidence or worth or spirit of competition or understanding that sometimes you're gonna be you're gonna pass the people that you're next to, and that's okay. Um, but th th that's the only thing I can say is if you if you want motivation, it's gonna be on you to set yourself up to succeed and put the, the steps in place to reach your goal. 
Um, all right, guys. <laughs> Probably redundant and repetitive. Hope you appreciate it. Still bringing the content. Talk to you later.